the sentencing, which was really a letdown because my attacker, even though he'd flouted the restraining order so badly to be remanded for three months and he only got a suspended sentence, it was also all of the mismatch within the criminal justice system in getting to that point. So I had the police not getting back to me quickly when I tried to file the report. I had prosecutors unsure of if it was illegal to tweet about someone or not when you have a restraining order. Um, I had to go through countless moments of me managing the criminal justice system to even get there. And then finally, after all of that, I sat in a room watching it remotely, had the video link fail briefly, had it come back on, and had to listen to the judge talking about how this person was of otherwise good character and sentencing him to something laughable. So you felt let down at every level, basically. Absolutely. And then the worst part was, that was my personal life. And then I would go to work and hear about how things were improving for victims of crime, how the, the victim and witness room at that particular court was getting refurbished. Well, it was there. It, it, it hadn't been. The, the money hadn't been allocated yet. So there was a complete mismatch yeah. between the claims of the government yeah. with, for which you were working and your actual experience of yeah. a victim of crime. And it was so dispiriting because I would be in these meetings where people were talking about how things were getting better and then I would experience the opposite. And previously, um, when I started working with the Rape Review, it was the opposite. I would be in meetings and I would say, we need to fix these things. And I'd be told how hard it was or how nearly impossible it was. And then we'd get there. And then I'd actually experience how things were better. Mm. And this was somehow a couple of years later, the opposite. So why have you decided then, something you're announcing now, yeah. that you're not going to stay as an advisor to the government? I don't really feel like there is a purpose to my staying. I feel like I go in to meetings and I have conversations and I say the same things over and over and nothing happens. I actually had somebody pull together a list of all of the different ways that I helped impact the rape review. There were about 20 different things that hadn't been in it until I walked in and started advocating for them. And that includes things like the 24 seven um, hotline for rape victims. That includes suspect focused investigation model with the police, um, better support and funding for victims. We got all of these things done through the rape review and it was amazing. And now I have lists of things that I have suggested and asked and said we should at least consult on it and none of them have happened. And it just feels like there's a, a lack of will to continue to change because look, the rape review has been a success. The rape review said that we would get back to pre-2016 prosecution volumes by the end of this parliament. And at the time, everybody said it was impossible. And yet those targets were met 18 months early. And that's amazing, but it's not good enough. So when the former Victims Commissioner says, for example, that rape has been effectively decriminalized, is that still the case or not? We know that 97 to 98% of the time, if somebody says that they've been raped, they've been raped. And we're still only prosecuting in two-ish percent of cases reported to the police. So give us an example, perhaps the most glaring example from your role inside government as to where the system has fallen short, how it's fallen short. It's going to sound silly, but fundamentally we need to remember that the government and all of the operational partners from the police to the prosecutors to the judges, they're all just people. And people innately believe in rape myths. So you have people going through their day-to-day -day lives who believe that, oh, well, maybe her skirt was too short. Maybe she was drinking. These are failings within obviously the police service that we've reported on a lot, but also within the civil service, within Absolutely. ministerial ranks you're talking about, that you've come across those attitudes sitting inside those rooms. So I have more come across it within the professional and civil service side of things. Um, one could probably say politicians are probably careful around me. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I've experienced that on a ministerial level, but I have seen it in various levels of every room I've ever been in. You're leaving your job. You're also leaving the country, um, going back to America, where, where you were born. Um, I mean, some might say violent crime in America, you know, dwarfs what's happening here. Well, why are you doing this? Fundamentally, I'm having a very hard time because after what happened in March with the sentencing and with my entire experience of having to fight against police prosecutors and a um, court system that just didn't seem to want to see me as a person. Um, 
I got to the point where I realized I don't think I could ever report a crime to the police in this country again, at least not right now. And that made me feel really, really unsafe. Emily Hunt, thank you very much. Well, in response, the Ministry of Justice told us we thank Emily Hunt for her valuable work over the last two years, supporting the government in exceeding all three ambitions of our rape review ahead of schedule. We remain determined to stamp out these appalling crimes, making sure the criminal justice system supports victims and holds perpetrators to account.